Dave here, how are you? Are you one of those people that have got a saw that you have to actually take the blade guard and splitter off to be able to remove the insert before you can get in and change blades and a whole lot of mucking around and you think it's just too much bother, I don't want to do it and you leave the guards off, you leave the riving knife off and it's just dangerous. So I thought I'll show a couple of things that I've done. Now this is a fine insert but what I've done is I've made a couple of different ones. Now this one, same as that, but it's a zero clearance. Turn it around the right way, it's a zero clearance. And I hold it into position with a couple of rare earth magnets. And it has a hole here to accept the arbor as I tip over to 45 degrees. Now that's great, works very, very nicely. But I still have to take the the splitter and the blade guard off to do it. So I've come up with another system. Stick with me and I'll show you how it's done. We want to make these inserts. On my particular saw, the insert is half an inch thick. Now rather than using half inch ply, I have laminated two pieces of quarter inch ply together. Let them dry and then I cut some blanks and then I used my old insert popped on top, scribed around it with a pencil, a sharp pencil, and left it slightly proud. I ripped the timber to the correct width until I knew that it would drop into that, um, into the throat of the table saw perfectly. But I put a mark on the table with a pencil right in line with the back of my splitter here, that is the blade guard support. Now, that's before I even cut it. Gee, there it is. There's the mark right there. So what I did next was I got the domino and then I put a six millimeter domino hole in there, 25 millimeters deep. Now you could do this with a quarter inch dowel. It will have the same effect. What we're trying to do here is create what I've done right here. And that is a slot that's going to come all the way down, but the domino or the dowel will be housed inside. It's like a pin that will hold the joint open. We don't want that to happen. We need to hold it open and we don't want this rocking sideways to happen as well. So first thing, put the mortise in there for the slip tenon or drill a hole down in there for the dowel. Must be dead center with that cut. So we go through the process and I take the blank then over to the bandsaw and I cut some rough forms around the outside so that my spiral upcut doesn't have to do so much work. We try and get rid of as much of the waste as possible at that stage. So I've done that on the bandsaw and I'm not using a very good blade there am I? I've got my rip blade on. I thought for this demonstration I'm not going to change it around to a curvy blade which I stick with the rip blade and take off some tangents. After I've put them over the bandsaw, I put them over the linisher and I clean up the edges until again I get a nice tight fit. Now that's my template. So if I want to make multiples of these now, I can bond this to another one, like so, with Turner's tape. That's the thing that I use. I use Turner's tape to hold them together. And then I put them over the router table with the spiral up pattern follower on it. So it's basically a trimmer. I don't like having the pattern on the bottom and the blank above with a sharp cutter protruding up. I'd much rather the other way. I'd have the item to be cut at the base, the pattern on top and a bearing, a friendly bearing on the top. Now again, I always use push box if I can whenever I'm at a router table to make sure that my hands are safe. Got all that done, got the blank cleaned up. What we're going to do then is we're going to bring the table saw's rip fence right up to the edge of the throat in the top of the table saw and we're going to pass the blank through until we get to about four inches away from the end. We don't need to go too much further at this stage. Once I've got the cut all the way through then I can put the domino or the dowel back in the end. Take it back over to the linisher and just lightly take off the outside of the domino so it's in line with the rest of the 
the insert. Now that is really strong. It's not going anywhere. It's going to support really well. We need to put a hole in there. Now I forgot to mention that. If we don't put this hole in early in the piece, what's going to happen is we're going to push this blank in there and if it's tight, we'll never get the jolly thing out again. It'll be stuck. So you need the hole in there to be able to pull it out as we're working. A slip of the memory there. Uh, right, now we've got that done. Now we need to create a 45 degrees for it as well. And also an area here for the outside of the arbor when the trunnion is rotated over to 45 degrees, the outside of that arbor comes almost up to the top of the table. It's only a matter of four millimeters away. So we create a large hole there. I created one that's two and an eighth inches diameter, and that has worked quite well. Be aware when you're doing it that the trunnion travels on an arc away from you. So I take the blade out at this stage to do this, and I raise the arbor all the way up to the top and swing it over to 45 degrees and then I put a mark on the table with a pencil as well. So it's all good. Okay so now we take this over to the drill press. Don't go all the way through that'd be terrible. We're going to stop around four millimeters shy of the top of the plywood. All depends on your saw. My saw had to have it because it's dado capable which means the thread on the arbor extends further than it does on a saw that can't have a dado stack on it. Okay, all good. We put a smaller diameter blade on. I use the 8 inch blade from my dado, the outside cutter. The reason being it's also a 3.2 millimeter kerf, the same as my main blade on my table saw. Put it on, it's one inch less in the radius. And so that allows me to drop it, the trunnion down all the way, put the insert back in, and I've brought my table saws rip fence back over with my Jessam stock guides, the clear cut stock guides to hold the insert down. They're better than just holding it with the fence because they have uh, urethane rollers that will actually hold. So what we've done is we've raised the blade up, the 8 inch blade, all the way up, take it down. Now if you have a 12 inch saw you could use a 10 inch saw blade to do that part. And it is helpful if it's exactly the same kerf as your standard blade. We rotate the saw up to 90 degrees, take the 8 inch blade out, put the 10 inch blade in, drop it all the way down, flip it back over to 45 degrees and repeat the process. Now we can raise the blade up and we can finish the completion of that cut. Now once we've got it, that cut done, be aware that there's going to be the cut finished is about here. Now we're going to have to continue that cut because we've only made allowance for the blade. We haven't made allowance for the splitter or the, the blade guard support. So we need to do that. So I used a small panel saw. Now you don't need to take the blade off the coping saw if you're doing this style where you've got the hole at the end, you can just slide it down and do the cutting. If you're doing this style, you'll need to take the blade off the coping saw put the blade through, put it back on the coping saw, and then do your final little bits of cut to cut out the center. Now, we need to give it a bit of a tidy up. And also, I like to put a couple of rare earth magnets on to hold the insert in. The reason being, I don't want it to pop up and I don't want it to bounce around at all. We need to check that the thickness is perfect. So I also, before I put the magnets in, because they're metal, I check mine it was slightly thicker so I ran it through the thickness so I just took one small pass off it then uh, I needed to clean it up make it people friendly so I put it over the little trimmer there in the bench and I used a one-sixth round over and I cleaned up the hole there and around the top and the bottom and the bottom of the hole as well a little bit of paper here and there and then some wax and doesn't it look lovely now does it work can I use it? Will it go in there? Well, rather than take that out, how about I just pick this up at the moment. I open this up a little, push out the pin or the domino, slide this along, put the domino in the back, and notice no movement there. Drop it down. How easy is that? There you go. And I'm ready to start cutting and I don't have the problem where pushing timber through gets caught on the 
outside of the throat there because that area there is notorious. If this is wobbling around, you will catch timber there and that can be dangerous. So there you go, that's, that's a great little project. People have asked me how to do the inserts. This is the way that I found the easiest. Thanks for watching. Check the description box below for links and keep coming back. Give me one of these if you think it's worth it and I shall see you next time. Bye. Oh, you want to see it come out? Why not? There we go, just pull it backwards until it touches. There it goes. Back in there. Magnetic. Goes anywhere I want. <laughs> see ya.